Believe me, the signs are before our eyes, but few have the courage to see them. Have you ever wondered why so many people ignore the clear evidence of Christ's imminent return? The truth is shocking. We are closer to the second coming than we have ever been. And this is no reason for fear, but for incomparable joy. Get ready for a revelation that will challenge everything you thought you knew about the last few days. In this video, we will discover together five irrefutable signs that point to the return of Jesus. The most surprising, the fifth sign is so unexpected that it could be happening right now, right under your nose. But beware, this knowledge comes with a responsibility. By the end of this video, you will have the power to transform not only your life, but also that of everyone around you. Are you ready for this journey? Don't waste a second. Click now on the registration button and activate the bell. Thus, you will not only guarantee access to exclusive content on biblical prophecies, but you will also join a community of believers prepared for the times to come. And don't forget, at the end, we will share a powerful prayer that will seal this new understanding in your heart. Let's dive into this extraordinary revelation together. Throughout human history, few expectations have moved hearts as much as the promise of Christ's return. As John tells us in chapter 14, Jesus assured us that he would return to seek his own, a promise that echoes through the centuries and gains even more relevance today. The biblical signs that point to this moment have been manifested in an extraordinary way in our generation. When we look at the daily headlines, it's impossible not to notice the similarities between contemporary events and the prophetic descriptions found in Scripture. Revelation presents us with a sequence of events leading up to the Second Coming, and many of them seem to be materializing before our eyes. This reality has attracted not only the attention of Christians, but also of scholars and attentive observers of global phenomena. In the midst of an increasingly digitally connected world, prophecies about the end times take on an unprecedented dimension. Isaiah, thousands of years ago, prophesied about a time when knowledge would multiply, something we witness daily with the exponential advancement of technology. Social networks and the internet allow us to follow in real time the fulfillment of various biblical prophecies. This global connectivity allows us to observe how Jesus' words about nations rising against nations are fulfilled before our eyes. The current scenario presents a unique convergence of events that, for many prophecy scholars, indicate that Christ's return may be closer than we imagine. The intensification of global crises has drawn attention to Paul's prophetic words in 2 Timothy. The Apostle accurately described the behavior of society in the last days, mentioning the love of money, ingratitude, lack of family love, and other aspects that we see clearly in our day. These social characteristics, added to the environmental and economic challenges we face, form a picture that aligns perfectly with biblical predictions. False prophets, mentioned by Jesus as one of the signs of the end, multiply through digital platforms, causing confusion and spiritual disorientation among many. The advance of globalization has created a unique scenario where prophecies about world unification take on new meaning. Daniel prophesied of a time when many would run from one place to another and knowledge would multiply. Today, intercontinental travel is commonplace and information circulates instantly. The global financial system, international alliances and multilateral agreements seem to set the stage for the events described in the book of Revelation. This unprecedented interconnectedness between nations makes us reflect on how the ancient prophecies fit perfectly into the current context. The preservation of the people of Israel and their return to their land, prophesied by Ezekiel, represents one of the most remarkable signs of the fulfillment of biblical prophecies. After centuries of dispersion, we witness in the 20th century the re-establishment of the State of Israel. 
an event that many consider crucial to the prophetic chronology. Tensions in the Middle East, centered on Jerusalem, have also been predicted in scripture as significant events of the end times. These historical events serve as tangible milestones that point to the nearness of Christ's return. The increase in natural disasters and drastic climate change also finds a parallel in biblical prophecies. Jesus mentioned that there would be earthquakes in various places and signs in the heavens. Scientists record a significant increase in the frequency and intensity of natural disasters, something that scripture already anticipated. Environmental degradation and climate change have caused extreme events that affect millions of people globally, reminding us of prophetic warnings about the last days. The global spread of the gospel, mentioned by Jesus as a crucial sign before his return, is now reaching unprecedented levels. Through technology, the message of salvation reaches the most remote places on the planet, fulfilling the prophecy that the gospel would be preached to all nations. Bible translations into different languages, satellite transmissions, and the internet have accelerated this process in ways that previous generations could not have imagined. This global reach of the Christian message represents a significant milestone in prophetic chronology. The current scenario presents a unique convergence of signs that point to the proximity of Christ's return. Biblical prophecies, written thousands of years ago, take on new meaning when observed in the light of contemporary events. Technology, social change, global conflicts, and environmental transformations seem to create the environment described in Scripture for the last days. For those awaiting the second coming, these signs serve as a reminder of the importance of vigilance and spiritual preparation. For as Jesus warned, no one knows the day or hour, but we can discern the signs of the times. The signs of the second coming of Jesus have been the subject of intense reflection and study over the centuries. The scriptures, in their timeless wisdom, provide us with clear pointers to this pivotal event. In Matthew 24, 6-7, Jesus warns his disciples about escalating global conflicts. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. This warning resonates strongly in our era, where geopolitical tensions reach alarming levels. Regional conflicts, territorial disputes, and the constant threat of weapons of mass destruction create a scenario that aligns perfectly with Christ's prophetic words. The prophet Isaiah, centuries earlier, already anticipated this climate of global instability in Isaiah 19.2, describing nations turning against each other. Natural disasters mentioned by Jesus as one of the signs of the last times have intensified in a remarkable way. Earthquakes, tsunamis, and extreme weather events occur with increasing frequency, reminding us of the words at Luke 21.11. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful things and also great signs from heaven. These manifestations of nature are not just physical phenomena, but carry a deep spiritual meaning. The Apostle Paul, in Romans 8.22, speaks of creation groaning as if in labor pangs, a powerful metaphor that connects natural events to God's plans for final redemption. The third sign, perhaps the most subtle but equally impactful, is the cooling of love between people and the increase in wickedness. Jesus foretold at Matthew 24, 12, and because wickedness abounds, the love of many will grow cold. This phenomenon manifests itself in the erosion of moral values, the fragmentation of family relationships, and the growing social polarization. The prophet Micah, in his vision of the last days, describes a society where trust between people becomes rare, Micah 7, 5-6. This reality challenges us to cultivate love and compassion in an increasingly individualistic and indifferent world. The proliferation of false prophets and deceptive doctrines constitutes the fourth prominent sign. Peter warns in 2 Peter 2, 1 about false teachers who would introduce destructive heresies 
In the information age, this phenomenon takes on unprecedented proportions. Social media and the internet amplify voices that distort biblical truths, creating confusion and spiritual disorientation. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, foresaw a time when people would turn away from the truth and turn to fables, sent Timothy 4, 3-4. This scenario calls us to keen discernment and in-depth study of the scriptures. The fifth sign, the global spread of the gospel, represents a positive and hopeful milestone. Jesus stated at Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Modern technology has played a crucial role in this prophetic fulfillment. Through the internet, satellite transmissions and digital media, the message of salvation reaches the most remote corners of the planet. This reality brings us back to John's vision in Revelation, where an angel flies through the middle of heaven, proclaiming the everlasting gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Revelation 14.6 these signs, far from being mere coincidences, form a coherent picture that points to the nearness of Christ's return. The prophet Daniel spoke of a time when many would run from one place to another and knowledge would multiply, Daniel 12.4. We live exactly in this era of global mobility and information explosion. Habakkuk's words take on new meaning, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, Habakkuk 2.14. This knowledge is not limited to science and technology alone, but includes the deeper understanding of God's plans for humanity. The convergence of these signs invites us to a deep reflection on our spiritual preparation. Jesus, in his parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25, 1-13, emphasizes the importance of vigilance and readiness it is not just about passively observing world events, but about cultivating an intimate relationship with God. The Apostle Paul exhorts us, So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 This vigilance is manifested in a life of prayer, scripture study, and service to others. As we contemplate these signs, we are called to an active and transformative response. Peter reminds us, Now since all these things are to be done away with, what persons ought ye not to be in holy conduct and godliness? 2 Peter 3.11 The signs of Jesus' return should not generate fear or anxiety, but inspire a life of holiness and purpose. We are invited to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Matthew 5, 13, 14, positively influencing our society. May we, like the children of Issachar, understand the times and know what we are to do. 1 Chronicles 12, 32, living with hope and expectation for the glorious return of our Savior. Preparation for the second coming of Jesus is a theme that resonates deeply in the hearts of the faithful. The Apostle Peter, in his second epistle, exhorts us, since all these things are thus to be done away with, what persons ought ye not to be in holy conduct and godliness? 2 Peter 3.11 This rhetorical question invites us to a deep reflection on our posture in the face of the signs of the times. Preparation is not only a matter of theological knowledge, but of personal and spiritual transformation. The psalmist reminds us, Teach us to number our days, that we may obtain a heart of wisdom, Psalm 90, 12. This wisdom manifests itself in the way we live each day, aware of the brevity of life and the eternity that awaits us. The strengthening of faith through an intimate relationship with God is the foundation of all spiritual preparation. Jesus, in his speech on the Mount of Olives, emphasized the importance of vigilance and prayer, Mark 13:33. This intimacy with God is not something abstract, but is built through concrete practices. Daily Bible reading, as the psalmist directs us, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my ways. Psalm 119, 105. Equips us with discernment and wisdom. 
Prayer in turn is not just a monologue, but a living dialogue with the Creator. Paul encourages us to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, cultivating a constant attitude of communion with God. Watchfulness, both of external events and of one's own heart, is a crucial aspect of Christian preparation. Jesus warned, Take heed to yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with the consequences of revelry, drunkenness, and the cares of this world. Luke 21, 34. This vigilance implies a keen discernment, capable of interpreting the signs of the times in the light of the scriptures. The prophet Habakkuk offers us a powerful example of spiritual watchfulness. I will stand on my watchtower and stand upon the fortress, and watch to see what God will say to me, Habakkuk 2.1. This posture of constant attention keeps us aligned with the divine will. Fellowship with other believers is a fundamental pillar in preparation for Christ's return. The author of Hebrews exhorts us, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but let us give admonition, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 25. This communion goes beyond simple social gatherings. It is an opportunity for mutual edification, encouragement, and spiritual growth. Paul uses the metaphor of the body to illustrate the interdependence among believers. 1 Corinthians 12, 12, 27. Each member, with their unique gifts and experiences, contributes to the strengthening of the whole. In times of uncertainty and challenges, this community of faith serves as a safe haven and a source of spiritual renewal. The practice of charity and love for our neighbor is a concrete manifestation of our preparation for the return of Jesus. Christ taught us that love of God and neighbor are the two greatest commandments, Matthew 22, 36 to 40. This love is not a passive emotion, but a deliberate action that reflects God's character. James challenges us, even so faith, if it does not have works, is dead by itself. James 2.17 Acts of compassion, generosity and service are tangible expressions of our faith and preparation. The prophet Micah beautifully sums up this call. He has declared to you, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? but that thou shouldest do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with thy God. Micah 6, 8. Humility is an often overlooked but essential aspect of preparing for Christ's return. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, exemplified and taught the importance of humility. Philippians 2, 5 to 8. This virtue protects us from spiritual pride and keeps us open to correction and continued growth. The Apostle Peter exhorts us, Clothe yourselves all with humility toward one another. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5, 5. Humility allows us to recognize our dependence on God and our constant need for His grace, while remaining vigilant and receptive to His guidance. Hope is the fuel that feeds our preparation. Paul describes hope as a helmet of salvation, 1 Thessalonians 5.8, protecting our minds from discouragement and skepticism. This hope is not an escape from reality, but a firm and sure anchor for the soul, Hebrews 6.19. It allows us to face the challenges of the present with confidence, knowing that the future is in God's hands. The prophet Jeremiah, even in the midst of adversity, proclaimed, For I know the thoughts which I think of you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you the end you hope for. Jeremiah 29, 11. This living hope motivates us to live each day with purpose and expectation. As we prepare for Christ's return, we are called to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Matthew 5, 13 to 14. Our preparation is not a selfish exercise, but a living testimony of God's love and grace. Paul encourages us, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
1 Corinthians 15.58 Every act of faith, every gesture of love, every moment of prayer, and every word of encouragement contributes to our preparation and to the advancement of the kingdom of God. May we, like the faithful servants in the parable of the talents, Matthew 25.14-30, be found ready and active in the service of our Lord when He returns. Facing the end times, as revealed in Scripture, demands an unprecedented posture of courage and discernment. Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, warned his followers of the coming tribulations. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. This powerful statement not only predicts challenges, but also offers a promise of ultimate victory. The Apostle Peter, echoing this teaching, exhorts us, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that is coming upon you, as though a strange thing happened to you. 1 Peter 4.12 These words prepare us to face adversity with an eternal perspective, recognizing that hardship is part of the divine plan for our growth and witness. The history of Christianity is filled with inspiring examples of martyrs and missionaries who faced seemingly insurmountable challenges with unwavering faith. Hebrews 11, often called the Hall of Faith, presents us with a lineage of heroes who, by faith, have overcome kingdoms, done righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Hebrews 11.33 these examples are not mere stories of the past, but beacons of hope and inspiration for contemporary believers. The prophet Daniel, facing the lion's den, and the three Hebrew youths in the fiery furnace demonstrate how genuine faith prevails even in the most adverse circumstances. Abiding in the faith, especially in the face of increasing challenges, is a recurring theme in the Pauline epistles. In 2 Timothy 3.1.5, Paul warns of the difficult times of the last days, characterized by selfishness, greed, and lack of love. However, he does not leave his readers without hope. In Ephesians 6.10-18, the apostle instructs us to put on the whole armor of God, a powerful metaphor that illustrates our spiritual preparation for combat. Each piece of this armor the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, represents crucial aspects of our spiritual defense against the forces of evil. The eternal perspective offered by Paul in Romans 8:18 8, is a balm to the soul in times of tribulation. By declaring that the afflictions of this present time are not to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us, the Apostle invites us to lift our gaze beyond the immediate circumstances. This vision, aligned with eternity, allows us to endure temporary trials with grace and dignity. The prophet Isaiah, centuries earlier, prophesied of this reality, for our light affliction for a moment worketh for us an eternal weight of glory exceeding exceeding. Isaiah 54, 17, echoed in 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Trust in divine protection and direction is a fundamental pillar in facing the challenges of recent times. The psalmist David, in the midst of countless adversities, proclaimed, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23, 1. This trust is not a naive denial of difficulties, but a powerful affirmation of God's sovereignty over all circumstances. Jeremiah, prophesying in a period of great national turmoil, received the divine promise, For I know the thoughts I think of you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you the end you hope for. Jeremiah 29.11 the life of constant prayer emerges as a vital strategy for navigating the challenges of the last times. Jesus, our supreme example, often withdrew to pray, especially before crucial moments in his ministry. Paul instructs us to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, a practice that keeps our connection with God alive and vibrant. Prayer is not just a ritual, but an intimate conversation with the Creator a source of strength, wisdom, and peace in the midst of life's storms.
The prophet Daniel, facing hostile decrees and threats to his life, maintained the habit of praying three times a day, Daniel 6.10, demonstrating that communion with God is our anchor in turbulent times. Spiritual discernment is crucial for navigating the complex challenges of the end times. Jesus warned of false prophets who would come and deceive many, Matthew 24, 24. This warning resonates even more strongly in our age of abundant and often contradictory information. The Apostle John counsels us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are of God. 1 John 4, 1. This discernment is cultivated through diligent study of scripture, prayer, and fellowship with other mature believers. King Solomon, recognizing the importance of discernment, asked God for an understanding heart to judge your people, that they may prudently discern between good and evil, 1 Kings 3.9. As we face the challenges of the end times, we are called to be more than conquerors, Romans 8.37. This victory does not necessarily manifest itself in the absence of problems, but in our ability to remain faithful and fruitful in the midst of adversity. The Apostle James encourages us to consider trials with joy, knowing that they produce perseverance. James 1, 2-4 Every challenge faced in faith becomes an opportunity for witness and spiritual growth. As the prophet Habakkuk declared in times of great uncertainty, Though the fig tree neither blossom nor be fruit in the vine, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk 3, 17-18 This posture of praise and trust, even in the face of adverse circumstances, is the most powerful testimony we can offer to the world as we await the glorious return of Christ. The message of hope that permeates Scripture is a beacon of light in the midst of the darkness of the end times. The prophet Isaiah, glimpsing this glorious reality, proclaimed, For behold, I am creating new heavens and a new earth, and they shall not remember the former things, neither shall they remember any more, Isaiah 65 and 17. This promise of cosmic renewal is not just a distant dream, but a reality that draws closer with the return of Christ. The Apostle Peter, echoing this view, encourages us to live waiting and hastening the coming of the day of God. So 2 Peter 3.12 This active hope transforms our perspective on the present, infusing each moment with eternal meaning. Jesus' return represents the culmination of God's promises, a moment of final redemption and complete restoration. Revelation offers us a glimpse of this glorious future. Behold, I make all things new. Revelation 21.5 This divine declaration is not just a promise of superficial change, but of a profound and all-encompassing transformation. The prophet Amos, centuries earlier, anticipated this time of restoration, speaking of mountains that would distill sweet wine and hills that would melt. Amos 9.13, a poetic metaphor for the abundance and blessing that will characterize Christ's coming kingdom. The absence of death, mourning and crying, as described in Revelation 21.4, represents the complete reversal of the curse that entered the world with the fall. This promise resonates with the words of the prophet Hosea, I will redeem them from the dead and rescue them from the grave. Hosea 13.14 The final victory over death, the last enemy to be destroyed, 1 Corinthians 15.26, marks Christ's ultimate triumph over all the forces of evil. This hope transforms our perspective on the present life, allowing us to face even death with confidence and peace. The expectation of a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness dwells, is a recurring theme in scripture. The prophet Micah envisioned a time when the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, Micah 4.3, a powerful image of universal peace and harmony. This vision of a transformed world is not an escape from present reality, but a call to live 
according to the values of the coming kingdom. As Peter exhorts us, but according to his promise, we look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. 2 Peter 3.13 The expectation for Jesus' return, far from being a period of fear or anxiety, is characterized by joy and anticipation. The Apostle Paul describes this attitude at Titus 2.13, speaking of the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of the great God and our Saviour Jesus Christ. This joy is not superficial or naive, but deeply rooted in trust in the divine promises. The psalmist captured this anticipated joy when he wrote, I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Psalm 122.1, an expression that we can apply to our expectation of Christ's coming kingdom. Christ's promise to be with us always to the end of the world, Matthew 28.20, is an inexhaustible source of comfort and strength. This constant presence is not just an abstract theological concept, but an experiential reality that sustains believers in all circumstances. The prophet Isaiah anticipated this truth when he declared, when thou passeth through the waters, I will be with thee, when by the rivers they shall not overwhelm thee, Isaiah 43.2. This assurance of the divine presence enables us to face the challenges of the end times with courage and confidence. Christian hope, grounded in God's promises, has a transformative impact on our daily lives. The Apostle John reminds us, everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure, 1 John 3.3. 3. This hope is not passive, but active, shaping our character and motivating us to live in a holy and righteous way. The prophet Zechariah spoke of a time when even the bells of horses would bear the inscription, Holiness to the Lord, Zechariah 14.20, illustrating how holiness will permeate every aspect of life in the coming kingdom. As we await Christ's return, we are called to be ambassadors of hope in a world often gripped by despair. Paul exhorts us not to grieve as others who have no hope, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Our hope should be contagious, positively influencing those around us. The prophet Malachi spoke of a book of remembrance written before the Lord for those who fear God and cherish his name, Malachi 3.16. May our lives be a living testimony of the hope we have in Christ writing a legacy of faith and expectation that will inspire future generations as we await the glorious day of his return. The question, are you ready for Jesus' return, echoes urgently in our hearts, inviting us to deep and personal reflection. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, urges us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12 a call to a life of constant vigilance and spiritual growth. This preparation is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process of transformation. The prophet Joel, anticipating the final days, cried out, Rend your hearts and not your garments, Joel 2.13, emphasizing the need for genuine internal change, not just outward appearances. Reflecting on the signs around us requires discernment and spiritual wisdom. Jesus warned his disciples to observe the fig tree and all the trees, using nature as an indicator of the times, Luke 21, 29 to 30. This observation should not lead us to fear or anxiety, but to a sense of urgency and renewed purpose. The psalmist teaches us to number our days so that we may obtain a wise heart. Psalm 90.12. Each day becomes a precious opportunity to align our lives with the divine will, living in anticipation of Christ's imminent return. Seeking a deeper relationship with God is at the heart of spiritual preparation. The prophet Jeremiah delivered the divine promise, Ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29.13. This search involves more than religious rituals. 
It is an invitation to authentic intimacy with the Creator. Through constant prayer, studying the scriptures, and meditating on His Word, we cultivate a living connection with God. Like Enoch, who walked with God, Genesis 5.24, we are called into daily, transforming fellowship with our Heavenly Father. Sharing our impressions and experiences about the signs of the times is a crucial part of our spiritual journey. The book of Malachi speaks of a time when those who fear the Lord speak each one with his companion. Malachi 3.16 This dialogue not only strengthens our individual faith, but also builds up the community of believers. By sharing our insights and studies, we create an environment of mutual learning and encouragement. Paul encouraged the Thessalonians to comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4.18, referring to truths about Christ's return. Preparation for Jesus' return is not just an individual exercise, but a communal journey. The author of Hebrews exhorts us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, especially as we see the day approaching. Hebrews 10.25 This communion is not only a social gathering, but a mutual strengthening in faith. Just as the body of Christ is made up of many members, 1 Corinthians 12 to 12 to 27, our spiritual preparation is enriched by the diversity of gifts and experiences within the faith community. Together, we can better discern the times and encourage one another on the journey of sanctification. Reflecting on the signs of the times should lead us to a practical and tangible response. James challenges us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. James 1.22 This practical application can manifest itself in many ways. In compassionate service to those in need, in the courageous proclamation of the gospel, or in the pursuit of justice and righteousness in our spheres of influence. The prophet Micah beautifully summed up this call. He has declared to you, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, but that thou shouldest do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with thy God? Micah 6, 8 As we share our faith and expectation for Christ's return, we become agents of hope in a world often dominated by fear and uncertainty. Peter encourages us to be always ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter 3:15. This testimony is not only verbal, but is lived daily through our attitudes and actions. As living letters, 2 Corinthians 3.3, 3, our lives should reflect the transformation Christ works in us, inspiring others to seek that same living hope. As we prepare for the future, let us remember Jesus' words, Therefore watch, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Matthew 25.13 this vigilance is not passive waiting, but an active posture of faith, hope, and love. May we, like the faithful servants in the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, 14, 30, wisely invest the resources and opportunities God has entrusted to us. As we reflect on the signs of the times, let us seek not only intellectual knowledge, but a profound transformation of the heart. May each of us say with the Apostle Paul, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. From now on the crown of righteousness is laid up for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8 As we reflect on the signs of Jesus' return, we are called to a life of vigilance, preparation, and active witness. May we, with unwavering faith and renewed hope, Look forward to Christ's glorious return, living each day as ambassadors of his kingdom, ready to meet our Savior. Now let us say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we prostrate ourselves before you with grateful and expectant hearts. In thy infinite wisdom, thou hast revealed to us the signs of the end times, not to frighten us, but to prepare us. Lord Jesus, we long for your glorious return, when every tear will be wiped away and your righteousness will reign forever. Holy Spirit, 
Guide us in these challenging days, strengthen our faith, and sharpen our discernment to recognize the signs of your coming. May we be found faithful, working tirelessly in your harvest until the day of your return. Almighty God, we ask you to awaken in us a renewed passion for you and your word. May our love not grow cold, even when wickedness increases around us. Strengthen us to resist the temptations and deceptions of these latter days. Lord Jesus, just as you warned us about false prophets and deceptive doctrines, give us wisdom to discern truth amidst the chaos of information. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Holy Spirit, clothe us with the whole armor of God, that we may stand firm against the wiles of the enemy. Loving Father, as we await Jesus' return, help us to be light in this world of darkness. May our testimonies be powerful and our compassion abundant. Use us, Lord, to reach the lost and encourage the discouraged. May the hope of your imminent return inspire us to live each day with purpose and dedication. Jesus, you have promised to be with us all the days until the end of time. May your constant presence comfort and strengthen us in times of trial. Holy Spirit, pour out a new anointing upon us that we may proclaim the good news of the kingdom with boldness and power. Lord Jesus, as the signs of your return intensify, the desire for holiness and consecration increases in us. Cleanse us from all sin and prepare us like a bride adorned for her bridegroom. May we be found watchful and ready when the trumpet sounds. Heavenly Father, give us a compassionate heart toward those who do not yet know you so that we can share the gospel with urgency and love. Holy Spirit, awaken your church for the final harvest, uniting us in one heart and purpose. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, amen. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, if this content has touched your heart and awakened in you a deeper desire to prepare for Jesus' return, I invite you to join us on this journey of faith and expectation. Subscribe to our channel right now and activate the bell to receive notifications. That way, you won't miss out on any inspiring content about the signs of the times and how to live a victorious Christian life as we await our Savior's return. Together, we can grow in knowledge, faith, and spiritual readiness. Don't miss this opportunity to be part of a community that is attentive to the signs and actively preparing for the glorious day of Christ's return. Click the sign up button now and join us on this exciting journey towards eternity. As we close another chapter together, I know some questions might still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk it alone. In the comments, you'll find a powerful key to this door many seek to open. The ebook. Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living a life of abundance. This is not just any book. It is the fruit of years of research, experience, and profound revelations now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that prevent your spiritual and financial growth. Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity meant for you. This ebook is more than words on a page. It's a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fulfillment and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It's a promise waiting to be fulfilled. With this guide, you're one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.